Hello there, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on YouTube, Medium, and at danielrosewell.tech. So for today's video, I wanted to demonstrate a way to back up a shared hosting account with rsync. Um, now I'm going to explain all the stuff that means in a second. rsync is really a Linux tool. There is a uh, something like it for Windows, but basically this video is intended for people running uh, some Linux distribution as their operating system. Now we showed in a previous video on this YouTube channel how to take full backups of your web hosting and I expl in cPanel there is a functionality called backup. Now cPanel is typically the way you'll manage your website if you uh, use shared hosting or if you use reseller hosting. Um, if you have VPS you'll have root access to the folder and that will make from a backup perspective in terms of taking um, incremental and rsync backups that'll make life a whole lot easier for you. This is just kind of a sort of ugly but effective workaround that I've developed because I'm at the kind of intermediate stage of uh, of growth uh, for this for this site here between reseller shared hosting and VPS. So the deficiency of taking a, uh, a full backup which is what we looked at last time which is the cPanel functionality as I said it gives a very unified format which is useful for um, transporting stuff between different hosting providers. So for instance, if you go through that full backup, it'll create a, as we saw in that video, and I'll put the link in the description, it gives a nice tar GZ archive. And if you um, go and unpack that archive, you'll see that it's got a very specific format. And it's got everything from the files, to the MySQL, to the cron jobs, to the email filters. It's a standardized format for portability be portability between web hosts. So what we're going to be doing is in this case it's a more bare bone approach. Now I would actually recommend that you do both. Uh, that's actually why I've implemented this. I always do these manual full account backups and the websites I really care about which there's only actually two of them. I'll try to do them. My plan is to do them once a month. I would say typically once every three months. But the problem with them is that um, because they're backing up absolutely everything every single time they run, if you have a big website that can easily be a 5, 6, 10 gigabyte archive of data and we've talked, I've talked in every video I've done so far on YouTube about the importance of 3 to one backups, primary plus two data sources, two different storage media, one of them off-site. Now the problem with running a full backup every single time you want to back up your web hosting and you're, you're backing up your web hosting because nobody should have 100% trust in their host and even if there is a little incremental backup utility in your, in your shared host it's a really good idea to uh, keep your own copies um, of your data. So moving those full images off site every time is really heavy work especially if you've just got a regular home internet connection that 6 or 10 meg gigabyte upload could could take all night. Now I've recently set up an NAS on the network so that makes it a little bit easier um, but you know it's still a lot of data and it's inefficient so my plan is to have this rsync job running um, in addition so that I can feel confident that there's, oh, there's a daily copy being taken uh, that will be the first way to get anything back a daily copy I own um, and in the event I truly the nuclear option ever occurs I'll have that hard full backup as well that'll be at most one month uh, behind the present. So given that we don't have root access in a shared environment there's two things that I'm going to focus on getting out of the host and putting in our own repository. What I'm going to do is just build a little uh, folder on my desktop here separate that into files and the database and we'll run an rsync command rsync command to grab each and we'll use one WordPress plugin. Now if you go to your shared hosting environment you will find I'm downloading from the WordPress root folder. I'm not doing public HTML, I'm not doing the root folder. There's a lot of stuff there that if it's just, you know, if, you're, if your objective here is just to capture a snapshot um, one day old constantly updated via rsync of data you don't need to get all that clutter in the user folder. Um, so just go for the WordPress root folder as you can see this WordPress installation is very very small I just threw this up in a second at Daniel demo.danielrosal.tech so it's on the root folder of a subdomain um, so that's the one I'm going to be backing up 
So the command, the first command we're going to need for this is we're going to be using rsync to uh, bring down stuff from the server. So uh, as you can see, what I've done here is I've added this ssh minus p. I just pay attention to the syntax because this is if your host uses a non-standard SSH port. Now, my sh if you have shared hosting, um, I'm not sure that they all even allow SSH access. Uh, mine does, but they give me this weird port. Now, it's not 12345. I've just swapped that in. Um, but to take a look at the command, so you've got rsync minus r, a, r, v, z. V is verbosity, um, among others. Now, there is another uh, minus e then setting uh, the connection port if it's not standard. I like this one as well, so I'm just going to add it. Two ones to talk about actually. Now, if you're doing, if you're running this from a cron tab, and that's my ultimate aim here, or from a bash script, um, that you're just going to be running while you're not there. You don't need this little progress bar. But even with the verbosity parameter on, I don't find rsync tells you enough. Um, it's particularly when you're trying to make just do a first run or two to make sure it's running okay. Um, I like this progress thing gives you more info. It shows each file and a little kind of, you know, graphical depiction of that. Progress and delete. So um, if you are keeping track of your hosting um, file bay on your local, then you'll f for sure want to be syncing deletions from source to target. So our source here is our remote server and our target is our local host. So that's the start part of the command. Now, this is going to be your um, equals your cPanel user. I mean, this I presume is kind of obvious to most people watching this video, but just the my user before your the IP address is your cPanel user. It's not the username you you use to sign into your shared hosting account, whether you host with GoDaddy or whatever. If you log into cPanel, you should see somewhere in the sidebar what your username your username on the server is um, now shared hosting you're going to be caged your root is going to be forward slash home um, forward slash something um, on a VPS server you're going to have root access so that's why this command starts with forward slash home forward slash my user and then it's the directory from the root. So I would actually go for this. As I said, the WordPress here was in the root of um, of of the public underscore HTML. So you have this folder. This is the, the home folder. And then there's public HTML. And if you have WordPress sitting at the root of, um, you know, your domain, your do, your domain dot com, then it's just going to be sitting at this directory relative to the server root, and you can't, you can't get any lower than this. But of course, home is one layer above uh, the root of the server, right? Typically, uh, in a Linux server, not typically, always forward slash home. That's where the home accounts are. So you don't. There's a level you're not seeing there, which I'm just denoting by those couple of dots. Um, but if you're in VPS, then you don't need this tutorial because you don't need to separate out the process of grabbing um, the files and the MySQL databases in this manner. So um, we have our uh, cPanel username, we have the public IP of our server, and again, you'll find this in your cPanel on the side and probably somewhere else in your hosting. Um, one uh, colon, and then the root home, my user public, and just end so that you grab everything from that point forwards. Um, and then I would just, as I said, I created a folder here on my desktop called restore files. And I'm going to put that into um, files and db. db, of course, being the MySQL database. Now, that's basically the syntax here um, for what you need. Now, you can do you can do with that what you want. I w you could put that into a cron job. You could execute this. Um, in if you have a Synology NAS, which is my new favorite toy, there's a thing in there called a uh, task scheduler, and it's basically like a cron job engine. Now, of course, before you go about using our sync from your local machine to connect with a remote server, you need to go ahead and make sure that you can SSH into that server. Typically, that will involve, um, you know, uh, generating an SSH key pair and importing that 
into your server uh, so that you're able to authenticate. So that's kind of a prerequisite to this whole uh, process that I jumped over, uh, but that is indeed the first step. So we're now basically ready to pull down our files from the server. So I'm just gonna go ahead, using our sync, I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, so as you can see, the uh, rsync job, wow, that was quick. rsync is really, really quick. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if it's quicker than FTP as a protocol. That's important to remember that rsync is its own protocol. I think it is. Um, I'm sure that can be found out easily online. That was literally three seconds, and uh, it's incredible to think that that was actually a sync um, all the way from a remote server. That was not a local area network sync. the alternative methodology which I'm not going to show in this video because I think it's a little bit easier to do it this way um, the problem really is remember as I said previously when you're in a shared hosting environment your root folder is this so you have all the files in this but you are not getting down to uh, clearly you can't access for example var and that's where the mysql databases are stored in in the server um so you have to find some other way to get the mysql databases out if you want to keep a um you know daily backup of them one option to use here is you can use mysql dump which is a mysql export utility uh, so what i would do is set up cron job um on hosting server um, and that would be to export um, my ex my SQL dump a WordPress database to and then relative to the server that would be let's say backups so then the path that you would want for your rsync job um, on the remote side would be you know user user at hosting IP as we did um, but it would be forward slash home user backup uh, or you know you could do backup MySQL and that would be the pass then there um, and then you know just back up to your local home backups or this could be an NAS as I said home backups um, hosting uh, DB so that um, this is a two-part one setup one is one is set up cron job on the hosting server to do your daily MySQL dump of the WordPress database and put it somewhere um, that you can access on the folder and as I said this backup uh, MySQL is um, relative to your shared root but it's an actual fact the real the real um, full, full link to that directory is actually from from the actual root of the server it's home your your username backup MySQL um, so that's a one two approach two is run our sync from hosting server to local and as i always say or nes because i think it makes a lot more sense to run these jobs off a server or an nes if you have one at your disposal so that's the alternative approach a bit more uh you know a couple more cron jobs and commands required um but this is a uh, sort of easier way so for the easier approach go into the uh, wordpress plugin repositories and look for um database mysql backup actually should find it pretty quickly now there may be there's a lot of wordpress backup plugins as you can see here um i won't comment about these because i've tried i've tried them all i find them actually quite um buggy when you're backing up a large multi-site environment and um i'm not sure i've seen one that separates out you know that's just designed uh to get the database and not the and not the file directory so this is the one i was looking for a wp database backup but you can see it's relatively well maintained update or sorry relatively frequently updated one month ago now this can do um backups to remote sources you can go straight to a um an s3 bucket you can go to dropbox you can go to google drive there's a few options so once that's installed it's actually under tools i was looking for it in settings for a while before and it's not there tools you can see the very bottom option here is WP database backup now if you look into your settings over here um, there's a couple of things I would change maximum local backups because you don't want to be taking one of these if you're running it daily and you know you'll wind up with eventually gigabytes of stuff um, on the server 
Um, so firstly, I would just keep that to, keep that to two, or something of that nature. I mean, for a tiny site of this size, uh, nothing really on it. They're they're gonna weigh very, very, very much, almost nothing. But for uh, for the bigger ones, they do. So sorry, destination is where you'll find the remotes. And um, as he said, you have a few cloud storages, you have FTP slash SFTP, um, but there is this option here for enabling local backups and you can put, so I'm gonna enable this and remember this is not the, this is the real, the real guy. So I would put in here something like if your, if your cPanel account was demo account and we said, I recommend creating backups at the root, the important thing is just not to put stuff that's where you put it. Now the important thing here is just not to put it anywhere within public HTML or below public HTML. So I created my backup folders, home user backups, and that's where I'm putting the, just for the purpose of keeping stuff clear, I'd probably better to call it my SQL. So it's literally at the root level of my shared hosting environment. You don't want to put anything here, as I said, because anything will be publicly accessible. So that's the path. Um, make sure it exists firstly before you go ahead and do that and then you can go and create your backups. Then you just click on create new database backup. Now if you have it on schedule it will start creating these. But the first time just for this demo I manually ran it. So this is really really minuscule. It's uh, as you can see 46 kilobytes in size. So now I'm going to show you the next rsync stage. So our, our, our second rsync command is going to look essentially like this. rsync, our usual parameters, again the weird port in my case uh, if you have a standard port 22 connection to your hosting, you don't need that. Your username on the cPanel, your public IP for your server. As I said, put it at home, demo backups my SQL, keep everything separated out. And in this restore folder that I'm building on my desktop here, I actually call it files, so let me just quickly change that. Files. And now I'm going to run that command and uh, pull down the uh, backup that we just took um, with the WordPress plugin. Okay, so that job our sync job, the second one just finished running. And we can see on my restore folder that I've created on my desktop here, I have two folders. One contains um, MySQL and the MySQL database weighing the same f the same amount as the WordPress plugin took it at about 600 kilobits. Uh, I didn't need, I should have just changed the syntax a little bit here. And likewise uh, for the files, but they are also there, the WordPress files. So that's a quick way of making sure that in a uh, in a shared hosting environment where you don't have that root access that you can just make sure and again the point of all this uh, of all this demo and uh, setting up these rsync commands was that you can put them running on you know push the, put those into wrap those into a nice bash script put that as a cron job and keep it running one times a day and you'll just pull down um, and because there's only two um, there's only two uh, MySQL databases backups being stored on the server. It would actually be a good idea to add the minus minus delete flag as well to just uh, to get the source deletions um, for the MySQL database because other otherwise, as I said, you'll end up with quite a lot of them. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been helpful. If there's any any uh, anybody would like to get in touch, uh, my website is danielrosel.co.al. Thanks for watching.